Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning, everybody. We are so happy that you're back because we have a lot to show you today. I have all of our favorite, actually, I take that back. It's not gonna be all of our favorite pumpkin recipes, but it's gonna be some of them. And I'm gonna show you things like how we make our pumpkin spice lattes, um, pumpkin roll, which is much simpler than you think and then a pumpkin cobbler that you're gonna love and i think i might have a couple other recipes that i'm gonna try to squeeze in but if not those three that i just mentioned are going to be the main ones and don't forget um your printable recipe in case i leave anything out in the recording process your printable recipe is in the description so you can just click on that link and you do not need to download the Dropbox app in order to get your recipes. You can just hit the button that says download anyway, and you can print the recipe after you download it to your computer. So all the printable recipes will be in the description. Now things have been very busy on the homestead. Fall brings this extra pressure of getting things wrapped up and ready for winter. We know that here in Northern Iowa, we are headed into months of snow cover and hard freeze. So while we try to get out and enjoy the beautiful fall days when we can, there's also this urgent need to make sure that we have shelter ready and make sure all the crops are stashed away we finally got all our crops out of the garden and that doesn't mean they're all stored properly yet but they're out of the garden we're preparing for really hard freezes next week um, the cows are complaining that the grass isn't as nutritious as it was in the summer um, so we're bringing the milk cows up to the barn every night so that they can eat hay and get some haylage and some grain to keep their production up and just to keep their body condition where we want it. And then in the morning when we're done milking, we take them back out to the pasture for the day and there they graze on the grass that is left. But now let's head to the kitchen and get started with all of our pumpkin projects. We are going to make pumpkin roll and it's actually very, very simple. And there's a few things that make all the difference when you're making pumpkin roll. And I'm gonna show you those tips and tricks. Um, but Harrison, first of all, we're gonna make a double recipe, right? Mm-hmm. And you actually said pumpkin instead of squash. Well, we are using squash, right? But you can use squash yeah. for pumpkin. First of all, we need to get the eggs. So we, need six Three. eggs. Oh. One recipe needs three eggs, but we need six eggs. So can you get us some eggs? Get one of these big boxes. Okay. This is the pink one. That is the pink one, isn't it? All right, so first of all. Do I put the eggs in? Yeah, we need to crack six eggs in. Okay. Try not to get any shells in. One. Yeah. one. Two. Two. Harrison, do you see the shell you have in there? Yep. Oh. You gotta scrape it against the side of the bowl. There you go, you got it out? Good job. Beat the, yep, you need to beat the eggs really well. Okay, that, that bowl's not a real good bowl for mixing the eggs. Let's pour the eggs in here. There you go, now mix them in there. That's good, that's good yeah. There you go. Make now, eggs. Yeah, that's like you make scrambled eggs. Okay, let's read what we need next. You Can you read that? Yellow? Um, one cup salt. 
Sugar. Sugar. But if we want to make it doubled, how many cups of sugar do we need? Two. Two cups of sugar. Double. Yep, that's one cup. One cup. Okay, oh, that's, that's two cups of sugar. And then see if you can read what the recipe says next. Next to one cup of sugar. Uh, two third. Oh, two third cup rum. P. It's a P. Oh, P. Uh, two thirds cup um, what? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Two thirds cup pumpkin. So two third and two third is four third, which is one and one third. And Mom's already measured it out. Okay. So it's all of that pumpkin goes in there. Looks like a lot. Yep. Yeah. You got it? Oopsies. It's a little splashy. It's a little splashy, isn't it? Uh, one fourth. One fourth. Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Baking, baking powder. powder. One fourth and one fourth is one half. Yeah. So here's your one half. One half. It's a half. It's barely any. I know. One half is not much at all. One teaspoon baking soda. If the recipe Ooh. calls for one teaspoon and we're doubling it. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoon. This is one teaspoon. One teaspoon. Oh, not heaping. Yep. Knock it all off until it's even. Even? Yep. Even Oops, Steven. That. Even Steven. There you go. One teaspoon. Two teaspoon. Because oh, we're making it doubled, right? Yep. Three-fourth cup of... Fl Flow. Ow. Flour? Yeah. So three fourth and three fourth is one and a half. So we need two of these? You need one and a half of those. Oh, okay. So fill it all the way up, just even though. Even. Okay, that's one. One. Flour. Half. Now you oh, need that one. one. Mm -hmm. One half. Yep, that's just right. Okay, what does it say next to flour? Flour. Two teaspoons. Can Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Jeez. But if we're going to make it doubled, um, we need four. Four teaspoons of cinnamon. That's a tablespoon. So that. And this. Okay, that's cinnamon. One half. So we need two halves. Right? One whole teaspoon of salt. One whole spoon. Yeah, that's a teaspoon. Boop. And then what's the next one? Okay. Um, this is the last ingredient. Okay. One teaspoon of vanilla. What is it? I have no clue. Try again. But vanilla. Yes, vanilla. So one teaspoon of vanilla. So we actually need two, right? Two teaspoons. One. Two. One. Two. Let's make it hard to mix. Okay, we mixed it all up, right? Can I taste some? No, not yet. You can lick the bowl then when you're all done. I'm going to use these two nonstick USA pans. Um, but before I had these nice nonstick pans, I would take my jelly roll pans and line them with parchment paper. And I would put nonstick spray on top of the parchment paper. So I've got some tallow and I'm just going to stick my tallow and my pans into the hot oven. And then I'll use the tallow to grease those pans. Okay, so our tallow is melted onto our pans. We want an extra layer of grease because we need to be able to flip these out of the pan when we're done. Now we're gonna divide this. And then we're just gonna spread it out. I'll get another one for me. Being careful to not scrape the bottom. Okay, let mom scrape it out, okay? Because I don't want to scrape the bottom and 
take away the grease because then it won't, then it'll stick. What happens if you get If it, it sticks and then we can't get it off. I thought it was a non-stick. It is a non-stick pan, that's true, but sometimes it still sticks. So we've got our oven turned to 250. 350, we've got our oven turned to 350 and we're going to set our timer for 15 minutes and then check them. And the thing with these pumpkin rolls is you want to over bake them. Otherwise they'll fall apart because they'll be too moist. So you wanna bake them to the point of them being dried out. All right, so our timer went and we are going to check So if these were cakes, they would be done now. But because we don't want any gooey parts left or any parts of the pumpkin roll that are too moist, I'm gonna set my timer for four more minute, uh, five more minutes and bake them just a little longer. So that would be a total of 20 minutes of baking. So now I'm just preparing to get the pumpkin roll out and you could use a little cornstarch on here if you want. I prefer to use um, powdered sugar. And what you want is you want to sprinkle powdered sugar or cornstarch onto a kitchen towel like this. Don't we ever put this is just a cotton kitchen towel. This is just to keep your pumpkin roll from sticking. Ooh. So this one looks to be done. The edges are a little crispy, which is fine. And I'm just gonna dump this on here. <gasps> uh oh. Oh no. I don't like when that happens. It broke. It broke. Let mom do it. It's like basically. Uh oh. At least we got it, right? No, I can still make it into a pumpkin roll. I'll just do it differently with the next one. It'll work, yeah. So that didn't quite go how I wanted, but so then we're just gonna roll it up like this. Yeah, that does work. Yep, it works. We can still make it work. We're gonna cool it just like that. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. Can you open the fridge for me? Now we're getting ready to do the next one. We use the pan scraper thing. Yeah. So when you use parchment paper, you can just kind of lift it off and flip it over and then peel the parchment paper off. Um, but I really did think these nonstick pans would work. would work better than they did. But in hindsight, I would use the um, parchment paper again because that's what I used to do before I had nonstick pans and they still came, they came out really nice. So. We should just put the spray on. Well, I think next time I'll just use parchment paper. That works. Yeah, this works as long as I'm going in and making sure it's all loose like that. See, there we go. Now we can flip it over. Yep, now we can flip it over. Ready, here Ooh, we go. That's hot. Ah, perfect. I feel like this one's good. This one's gonna work out way better. We're gonna roll it up. Now what are we ready for? And we can use these as lunches. Yep. Okay, now we're gonna put this in the fridge. Can you open the fridge for me? Yep. Okay, I am making the frosting for the pumpkin roll, like the filling part. Um, so I've got my cream cheese, and remember I'm making a double recipe. I've got my cream cheese in here. And I've got my softened butter. And don't forget that um, the links to your printable recipes will be in, are you back to help? In the description of the video. So first of all, we gotta whip together the cream cheese and the butter until it's nice and creamy. All right, you ready to turn it on? Just turn it to one for now. One. Fast for one. It is pretty fast for one. What do you think? Is it ready? I don't know. I think it's ready to add.
add the sugar. Okay, put about four droppers full in of vanilla. Four. Okay, now we need two cups of powdered sugar. Just put it on one for now. Yeah, you can have the beaters. So as soon as your pumpkin roll is cool, you can unroll it. It only takes a couple hours for it to chill. And we're gonna use tin foil this time. The reason we rolled it is so that it was kind of like to train it. We trained the pumpkin roll how we wanted it to go. And then we're gonna put frosting all over. So now we're gonna just roll it back up. Just like that. It's big. And then we're gonna wrap it in tin foil and this time we're gonna lay it in the freezer for a couple hours before we slice it because that makes real pretty slices if we put it in the freezer so I'm showing this broken pumpkin roll to show you that all you're gonna have is a couple slices that aren't perfect otherwise it works if we try to slice them without freezing them it still works it's just not quite as pretty as if we slice them after we freeze them. All right, are we ready to try it? Mm -hmm. You think it's frozen enough to slice? Oh, is this the one that had a hole in? No, this is not the broken one. This is the perfect one. The perfect one. It's still a little too soft. Cause see how it squishes it? You can eat that. <laughs> so I sliced it just a little too early. I should have let it freeze a little longer, but I wanted to edit this part and add it to today's YouTube video. So I rushed it a little bit. But if you freeze it until it's frozen solid, you can slice them without any frosting squeezing out and they'll stay nice and round, just like this and the cake part won't crush into the frosting part. They're so good. <laughs> They're so good. Shall we cut enough for the school kids when they come home? No. All right. So I store my pumpkin roll in the freezer and just slice it right before I serve it. This line, uh -huh. put your pinky, and this line, put your pinky, do the same. And then, put your fingers together again. And it's the same thing. <laughs> so we are going to get started on this pumpkin cobbler for our Monday night dessert. So here is a half a jar of the pumpkin puree that I canned last week. And this recipe calls for one cup. So that would be half a pint. And we already used some of this to make our pumpkin spice lattes. So we're gonna get started with the pumpkin puree. And you can absolutely use store-bought pumpkin puree. Probably look a little darker because the pureed squash is, actually, is a little more yellow. You can use either store-bought or home canned pumpkin puree, or in this case, squash puree. So first we're gonna add all our wet ingredients. So I need some milk for my pumpkin cobbler, um, but we wanna have some ice cream to go with the pumpkin cobbler. 
So I'm going to take all of the cream off of the milk and we're going to use that cream to make our ice cream. And I'll link the recipe to my Homestead ice cream um, in the description because I've done a previous video on making ice cream. So we're going to set that cream aside. I need one half a cup of milk. I need one half a cup of butter. You could use olive oil or any kind of fat. Um, if you use lard or tallow, you'll need to melt it. I'm using butter because I have lots of butter right now. And then the only other liquid we need is some vanilla. We need one teaspoon of vanilla. So we're gonna mix our liquids together really well. And my pumpkin was in the refrigerator, it was cold, so my butter got chilled again, but that's okay. We're going to add one and a half cup of granulated sugar. So we need four teaspoons of baking powder. We need one teaspoon of salt. You need two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice and in the recipe, in the description, I'll put the individual spices in case you can't find pumpkin pie spice because we can't always find it at our grocery store. And then we just mix it together and make it ourselves. Now before I add my flour, I'm just gonna mix my sugar in. Then we need two and one fourth cup of flour. And that's all for the batter. So your batter should look like a thick cake batter. So we're gonna put that into our nine by 13 pan. Just gonna spread this in the bottom of the pan. So for the topping, we're gonna set this aside. We're not gonna bake it yet. We are going, we're going to add one half a cup of nuts you can use any kind of nuts i'm using chopped walnuts you could use pecans pecans would probably be the first choice but i only have chopped walnuts on hand because i buy those in bulk i'm going to add one cup of white sugar or granulated sugar my granulated sugar looks darker than regular granulated sugar because it's organic from azure and then you need one cup of brown sugar and we're just gonna mix that sugar and the nuts together. So then we're gonna take our sugar and nut mixture and sprinkle it over the top. Okay, so I've got my batter and I've got the sugar and nut mixture on top. Now, if you're not ready to bake this right away, you'll put it in the refrigerator like this. And unlike, um, fruit cobblers. This one is going to be best if you bake it and serve it right away. So here's the thing that makes pumpkin cobbler different than fruit cobblers. Because the um, with fruit cobblers, when you bake it, the, the fruit releases its juices and then you get that gooiness that we all associate with cobblers and we all love about cobblers. So if you were to bake this just like this, it would be like a cake with crumb topping. But here's the little magic to a very delicious pumpkin cobbler that you will love. One cup of very hot water right before you bake it. So if you had it in the refrigerator, you would wait to add your hot water until you put it in the oven. So we're just gonna pour one cup of very hot water all over this pumpkin cobbler and then we are going to put it in a 350 degree oven while that bakes i'm going to get the ice cream ready and hadassah is busy mashing the potatoes for a shepherd's pie for our supper So 
it has been about an hour at 350 degrees. We're going to check our pumpkin cobbler, and I'm just going to stick my knife in. It comes out clean, so we're going to call that good. And we're going to call in the troops for supper. And it looks like the ice cream will be ready to accompany our pumpkin cobbler. So I thought, okay, I'm done filming. And then I remembered one more thing that I absolutely cannot end this video without showing you. And that is how to make your own pumpkin spice latte. So we're going to start with, and we had written down a recipe, but now we just kind of make it from the heart. So I am going to do my best to write down a recipe but this is this morning's milk it's already developed quite a nice cream line but we're just going to shake it up <clears throat> and we're going to use we're going to start with one cup of milk and then because i used all the pumpkin puree i'm going to open a jar that i canned yesterday and this is one that siphoned out a little bit so I'm going to use this one first, and now I can't open it. There we go. And we're just going to put the rest of this in the refrigerator then, and we will make pumpkin spice lattes the rest of the week with it. So to that one cup of milk, you're going to add at least one tablespoon of pumpkin puree. Are we making a double batch? I'm going to make enough to share with you, okay? So what are we making? Pumpkin spice latte. <gasps> Yum! You can add anywhere from one to three tablespoons of sugar or maple syrup. Harrison and I are going to add maple syrup. So then we don't have to yep. um, mix it. So. That's right. We're making a double batch. We're making enough for you and I to share. And then we're going to add a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla. We're going to add just a pinch of salt. We're going to add about a fourth a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. So we're going to put pumpkin pie spice in there. It looks good, doesn't it? Okay, so we're just going to use our frother. Woo! <laughs> okay, put it all the way in. Keep it in. Is, are you keeping it in? Okay, let go. All right, now we're going to heat it, okay? Oh, someone in my eye. <laughs> okay, so our pumpkin spice is hot. It's very hot, Harrison. I might have to add some cold milk to yours. Is it as hot as coffee? And then for mine, I'm going to fill my cup up about halfway with that. You want me to put some cold milk in yours? Yeah. And then you want me to make it frothy? That's good. This way. Okay, now taste it. Mm. Is it good? And then for mine, of course, I'm going to fill it up the rest of the way with some coffee. Can I have some coffee? You want some coffee in yours? Just a little bit. How's that? <laughs> Yummy. A, a coffee ground down there? Is that good? Well, what am I always doing making a mess? <laughs> At least it didn't get on our seeds. Yeah, we don't want it to go on our seeds. Okay, let me wipe up our mess. Oopsies. Oh, that's very good. Very good. 
Well, that brings us to the end of this week's video. Thank you everybody for watching and a special thank you to those of you that stayed all the way to the end and watched the ads. Um, that is how we get paid is by you watching the ads. So thank you. And don't forget um, anything that I've mentioned, I will put in the links, including the link to our emails and where I make family announcements and other things <clears throat> that I don't always have the freedom to talk about on social media. Any other recipes like the ice cream or the apple pie filling that I talked about, I will link in the description as well. Again, thank you, and we will be back next Saturday with a new video.